Okay, we're going to make some thumbprint cookies and we're going to use some of that wonderful pineapple orange jelly that Boompy makes. Let's see how they turn out, huh? Right, these recipes, a lot of these recipes I have came from John who was from Switzerland, so a lot of these things are written in grams, which is fine because the measurements are much more precise. And I could break this in half, but the problem is it's got one egg and you could weigh the egg and then use half of it, but we're not gonna, we're gonna do the whole thing. So it's gonna make like almost three dozen, but we'll see what we end up with. All right, so I'm gonna put your bowl on there and that'll tear it off. Tearing is when it'll show you on your, on your scale, you hit tear and it set, sets it to zero. And then we're gonna to go to grams, all right? So. Give it a touch, make sure everything's working fine. All right, so this is going to call for 175 grams of butter, which is about three quarters of a cup. Looks like it may be a little more than a cup to me, but that's what we got there. Now you can do this with a spatula and it'll work fine, but we're going to use that cool little mixer and then it says 140 grams of sugar. So what you do now is you get your butter in there, hit the tear button again once, just touch it, and that'll bring it back to zero. And then we're gonna do 140 grams of sugar. Now it's always good to don't dump, okay? Just go little by little. It may take a second, but if you, go, if you put too much, then you're gonna end up with just too much and it may incorporate with your other products and you'll have a mess. So just take it easy and go slow. And it says 140. You can also pour it into another bowl and dump it in there. Because that's what we're going to do with our egg. Because as I had said before, when you're playing around with eggs, you never know what's inside that shell. So you dump, crack an egg directly in there, you can get egg yolks that are rotten or bloody or whatever, you may get some shell in there, you don't want any of that. All right, for right now, we're gonna get this out of the way. And we're gonna use a trusty mixer. Like I said, you could use a spatula, but we're gonna do it this way. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cream these together. Creaming is making sure you incorporate that butter and your sugar completely. And the friction of it, the paper from the butter, the friction of it will soften up the butter a little bit. You always want to use softened butter in this too. You don't want to try beating around on hard butter. Okay. Try to grab that off of there, there you go. The friction of it will soften up your sugar. And baking sugar is considered a liquid always. As soon as it gets wet, it liquefies. But you want to really get that butter and the sugar mixed. And also you're incorporating air in here, which will give you a fluffier, lighter product. All right, let's kill that just for a second. It'll be a little bit gritty, but that's okay. I love this mixer. Okay. Do this in a deep bowl. Do it in a shallow bowl, you'd be making a mess. It'll sling it out of the top. Right, that looks good. Now what you do is lift it just a little off the bottom and kick it up to full speed and it'll whip and clean itself off. But that's why a deep bowl is better for this. All right, see that cleaned it up pretty good, didn't it? All right, so make sure you get the bottom, get everything nice. Now look how nice and light and fluffy that is. That's good. Use the granulated sugar. 
You don't want to be using powdered sugar. You can, but that makes a different product altogether. Okay, it, it, it just, it, it's stiffer. All right, we're gonna go one egg in here. And like I said, crack it into a bowl to check it. Make sure you don't put any shells in there. And then put that in there. And we're gonna use vanilla extract. It's one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Orange extract is great in this. Almond extract isn't bad. As long as it doesn't argue with the fruit that you're putting in there, okay? And this, I would get this going a little bit with a spatula. It has a tendency to uh, make a little bit of a mess if you don't. There's a lot of alcohol in extracts. Flavored seasonings don't have a ton of alcohol in it. All right. Now that you got that incorporated in there, go ahead and let it mix up a little bit. It may separate a little bit, especially if you're using a bunch of different eggs in there. It'll kind of come apart. It won't hurt anything. When you're doing a really high fatty cookies, oops, that'll happen a lot. Sometimes you look at it and think it's broken, but once you start mixing the flour in, it'll be fine. All right, look at that. That's nice and fluffy. Look at that guy, huh? I got my oven preheated at 375. I know that's fairly hot. But we're gonna check them at 10 minutes. Usually baking's at 325. But that's what it's got on here. All right, again, I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a zing, clean off my paddles a little bit. Okay, looks good, smells good. Well, let's get that back on the scale. All right. Now you're gonna hit your tear button again, tearing it down to zero. And it's calling for 260 grams of flour. Now, if you're doing it by the cup, cups way different. It depends on how wet the flour is, how, how much you compact it when you dig in there. If you're digging in there, you're compacting it. And then so you always get different measurements. So weighing flour is always a good idea. So we're going 260. Be careful, don't overdo it here either. See that, I went over. Luckily, it's not a whole lot underneath there but butter and I didn't get into it. All right, 260 grams of flour, quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna do that in my hand. All right, we're gonna get back into this again. Let's use a spatula to get it started. Flour is another one of those things. Flour will just take off and make a mess. It'll just shoot all over the place. And this is gonna be pretty stiff. But once it gets incorporated, you'll be looking at it going, this isn't right. It's right. Once you get that, and there's a lot of fat in there. It's pretty much all it is, fat and sugar right now. And then you added the flour to it. And it's not like it's a water product where it's gonna make heavy gluten because you're not activating the gluten a whole lot without the water in it. You're making kind of like a pie dough. See how that's starting to come together? Nice, huh? All right, let's see how these things are gonna work with this. You wanna have a little structure to it, right? You wanna have a little bit of a cookiness to it. If it's all just mixed together like a donut or like a biscuit, 
that's not going to do any good, right? Oops. All right, that's nice, huh? Back and forth. Make sure you get all the areas in there. You can always turn your bowl around and work in different areas. Up the sides, back and forth. Get out your spatula, scrape the bottom if you don't think you're getting all the way down. All right, look at that. All right, you just want it to be completely mixed. Once it's mixed, it's mixed, right? All right, this one will be make a little bit more of a mess if you try to spin it off. So be careful. All right, a little bit in there. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, get your spatula. See how stiff that is? You want it to be stiff because if you didn't, if it was thin, once it got hot, it would just kind of run all over the place. And you want these cookies to kind of stay stiff a little bit so they'll stay standing up. Because if they spread out too much, then you'll end up with a, your jelly will just run right out. Okay, it looks like it's mixed pretty good, don't it? All right. Let's grab our silicone pans. How are you looking? Am I in there? Beautiful. So you're going to use your new scoop. That's a one tablespoon. All right, scrape it off on the side when you do it. All right. You want to get these things a little room to spread. So you should be able to get five across this. We're going to get four. Not so sticky that you won't be able to do anything with them. Move them around if you have to. All right, I'm going to go ahead and line these all out. You can refrigerate this dough, not a problem. You can freeze it. So if you only wanted to make half, that's what I'm going to do. How about that? I'm going to do one pan of these, and then I'll freeze it. Because I know I'm going to end up eating it all. So I figure we get three dozen out of that, and 36. So we'll get 18. One, two, three, four, 16. Let's go 20. No, I like 18. That leaves me about half of it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our little bucket of just a little bit of water here, just enough to keep your fingers wet. All right, these cookies, they all got pretty clean, good shape. Reshape them around if you want. If you wanted to roll them, you could. I would give them a good round shape. Let's do that, just to show you. But you definitely want them to all be the same size, right? It's a fat one. If they start sticking to your hands, just a little touch of water in your hands will be all you need. Now these you can put in a pastry bag. 
shape them like in a circle, like a wreath. The star tip looks really cool like that. It'll give it a little bit of edges. You could shape it in a figure eight and put two different kinds of jelly, one on each side, which was always a fun one to do around the holidays. Okay, so they're called thumbprint cookies because now you want to get a little bit of more water on your hand, just a little bit, and just give them a little press, not a whole lot, just a just a touch, just to flatten them, just to just to say, hey, I flattened you a little bit. And these are nice and moist. A drier cookie kind of tends to crack on you. Looks a little gnarly. All right, so if you did with your thumb, your thumb would be kind of big. And then it just doesn't really work. They're called a thumbprint cookie. You could use the tip of your finger. If you had your little French rolling pin, one of those ends is actually not bad size. You can use a measuring spoon. That'll do as well. You dip one down there to just give you an idea. Just any measuring spoon. And just give it a little touch in there. Look at that. It gives you a nice little shape. Okay, that's about your cookie's only going to spread a little bit. Use the back of your knuckle though. Pick one that's small. Your pointer finger knuckle is just fine. Give that a push down. Don't go all the way down because you want to have a little structure left at the bottom, right? So it, you have a cookie. You don't want to go all the way down, all right? Do what you got to do. Make sure you dip it in water every time. I'm going to use my one finger because. I got big knuckles. You don't want to use a whole lot of water, just kind of, you don't want to wet it too much. But you don't want to be sticking to it either, like that one here. And the bigger your hole is, the more jelly it's going to hold. So my oven just beeped a minute ago, so it's preset. Preheated. Mine's a convection oven, so it preheats to 25 degrees cooler than a regular oven. All right, there we go. See, my thumb would have been a little pushing it, the hole a little too oblong. If I would have went that way, my fingernail would have been digging into it. Okay, here's the fun part. Get yourself some jelly, whatever your favorite is. This is that Boompy's pineapple orange that he makes. This stuff is so good. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, use two teaspoons for this. All right, try to gauge how much you're gonna need for each one. You can use blackberry jelly or whatever. See, that's gonna be way that's going to be a little bit too much. I'm going to leave that one just to see what it looks like. So kind of scoop out what you think is going to be in there. Until you figure it out. That's going to be too much. I'll get it a little smaller. That's going to be trial and error. A lot of people bake these ahead of time, and then put the jelly in afterwards. That certainly will work. They tend to uh, be a little wet though. Yeah, now I'm getting the hang of it, huh? I'm gonna keep it in there. Anything that's not in there is gonna be stuck to the side and just burn. And these are really small demi toss spoons that are... I used to use these on the buffets all the time. Put caviar and stuff in them. You could certainly put two different or three different kinds of jelly, whatever you want. 
Seedless jellies are good for this. The seedless raspberry and seedless strawberry. Or jams. Don't lick your fingers. It's hard not to. Chocolate won't work in here. Chocolate will burn. M&Ms will kind of work if you just poked an M&M on top of it. Or a Hershey's Kiss right in the middle of it. Imagine you could use something like a little of those little mini Reese's cups. That would make a mess. All right, there we go. Look at these guys. You don't have to you don't have to spray your pan either because this is a silicone. Nothing going to stick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in. Let's keep an eye on those two, but they're going to make a mess. I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the oven. I'm going to check it in about 11 minutes. See how it looks. You want them just to be a, just slightly golden brown. The bottoms will get a lot darker than the top. We'll see what they go to. All right, I'll be back in 11 minutes and we'll look at this. Meanwhile, we're going to take this cookie dough here. I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper. This is just a baking paper, Quilon or wax paper, whatever they, they sell in the sheets. And the way that we used to do these, you could kind of take it and shape it like a log. Right in the middle. And you set it up this way where you can just cut cookies off of it next time. You just want to make a basic sugar cookie. Make it in a log. When you get it out, it's refrigerated. You just slice the size of your cookies that you want, lay them all out in your pan. All right, so let's get that guy set up here. The way they do this is you go past it, put your fingers down behind it, and pull it to you. Get it to the size basically that you want. Don't forget it's going to spread. I'm going to go a little bit smaller, right? Another way to do that, you know what? Just use a regular knife. Put your bench knife up against it. It'll give you a nice square shape, square cut across here. Be careful, don't cut yourself with the blade. And that'll give you a good shape. And you know that's the size your cookie's going to be whenever you unroll it. And then you can just cut them down. So then give it a little poke at this end. A little poke at that end. Give it a roll. Okay, you can give that a twist. The other end will put in a twist. That'll be your shape. Put that dog in the freezer. You're good. All right. We still got about eight minutes on those cookies, so I'll be back in eight minutes. Okay, it's been about 12 minutes. I checked it at 11 minutes and they weren't quite ready. But now they are. They look nice. They're a little bit blonde, but they're fine. They're perfect, actually. I don't want them to go too much further. You can see in here the fruit is boiling. So you don't want to go shoving one of them in your mouth, that's for sure. You'll only do that once. See if we can't turn one of these over. They're pretty delicate at this time, but there's the bottoms. And the jelly just fell out. Okay, burn me. It's okay, I want to get that back in there. Wasn't that bad. So, there's our guys. See, I can't get a better picture. I'm going to transfer these to the wire rack to let them cool. And since we don't have a wire rack, I know you got one of them around. That's for stopping stuff from splattering when you're frying in a frying pan. Put that over a plate. That's going to let plenty of air underneath of it. And be careful with these guys. Transfer them over. You're going to let them cool at least 15, 20 minutes. At this point, they're soft. They may not feel like they're completely done. 
but once they start to dry, cool down a little bit, they'll get nice and crunchy. Very hot. You can use your little plastic spatula, a little super flat pancake spatula if you want. At this point, you definitely want to let them cool, but at this point you could put icing on them, chocolate on them, anything you want to decorate them a little bit further. And there we have it, thumbprint cookies, actually knuckle print, fingerprint cookies. These are with pineapple orange marmalade. It's chopped it real fine, real nice. You can see how it started to brown off a little nicely on those little tips right there. I'll let you know how good they were. All 18 of them. Oh, let's measure them. Okay, for that scoop that you got, that's that one tablespoon scoop. So these are about two and a quarter inches long. Two inches, two and a quarter inches are measuring out. So that'll give you an idea on how big they are. Compared to your scoop, that's the scoop size that we were using. So that's how much they grew. Okay. All right. I hope you like them.